I'm Nikki, and this is Jason. In 2016, we bought a sailboat with absolutely no experience and set off to explore the world. So far, we've sailed to seven countries and put over 13,000 nautical miles under our hulls. We had no idea what to expect or how to budget for such an unknown lifestyle. Our first year was the most expensive of our lives. Learning and outfitting our new home so she would be self-sufficient took endless days and months. But all of those off-grid mods are what saves us money now. We're able to live at anchor, harness our power from the sun, and turn seawater into drinking water. So the big question is, now that we've been living this adventurous life at sea for four years, what does it cost? All right, before we get started, there are a few things you need to know. And the most important is that you can do this on any budget. Yeah, we've been cruising with $5,000 boats and $50 million boats, and that is not an exaggeration. No, so look, results are gonna vary because how we spend money and how you spend money will inevitably be different. So one size doesn't fit all, and keep that in mind as we go through all of this. But whatever you're spending right now, you can probably live an alternative lifestyle on the same budget. Yeah, and we say that because we've been living an alternative lifestyle for 10 years 10 now. Years. The first six years were RVing around North America, and then we transitioned into a boat, and we've been sailing for the last four. And I've kept track of expenses the entire time, and when I looked back, I was just, I was surprised. I thought, holy cow, we've been basically living on the same budget the whole time. Like, mm -hmm. sure, certain categories have gone up and down based on the RV or the sailboat, mm -hmm. but in general, we're spending the same amount of money. Yeah, and it's really wild because it's a less expensive lifestyle than when we were back in our sticks and bricks in Dallas, Texas, long before we started this whole thing. <laughs> now, we're not on a shoestring. If you've seen our videos, you know, yeah. but we are living on a fixed budget. Yeah, so whether you're just curious or you're planning for yourself, this is our living and boat costs. All right, let's start with boat costs and our biggest expense, which is boat insurance. And it's a complete, total pain in the arse. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And we could do an entire video just on boat insurance. It's a pain in the arse because it has gotten more expensive and has been more difficult every single year, which is contrary to what we were told to expect. And the general rule of thumb is one to 3% of the value of your boat is what you should expect to pay in insurance. And Year one, we had no experience and we were at like one and a half percent. And then it just went up and up and now we're over 2%. Yeah. So if you're a newbie, we would definitely recommend budgeting for 3% yeah. of the value of your boat. Did we say that? Yes, we did. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> we also have another policy called renter's insurance and that covers things like cameras, computers, wedding rings, things that aren't attached to the boat. And things that we take to land and could accidentally drop in the water. Get or, stolen. Yeah, accidental theft, damage, whatever. Um, so it has all of those benefits plus a few extras and it was way cheaper than trying to add that type of coverage onto our boat policy because when we did that, it just really became astronomical. Yeah, but we can go into way more depth if we decide to make a video on it. If you tell us to make a video on it, leave a comment down below if you want to know more. Exactly. Repairs and maintenance. Now, we covered this a little bit in our last video, so if you haven't watched that, make sure and check it out. Also very helpful. And the general rule of thumb for this one is 10 to 30% of the value of your boat is what you should budget for every year. The more you put into working on your own boat, the less you're gonna spend. And the more you have other people do it, the more you're gonna spend. So that's how you get from 10 to 30%. I know it's a huge variance there. Right. Uh, but for our first year, we outfitted our boat to go fully off the grid and to sail around the world. So we ended up spending more like 20% of the value of our boat. Right, which was like navigation, solar and lithium, rigging, feathery props, new sails, composting toilet. Underwater lights, rub rails, did blah, So blah, on and yeah. so forth. Yeah, so it was a lot, a lot to get us to that 20%. So that was a tough year. <laughs> yeah, but the past two years have been, well, we got off easy because like we're under 2% of the value of our boat for the past two years. So that's like... Feels good. It helps kind of make up for that first year a it's, little bit, but... It, it's not that we didn't have anything break, but it's that we did all of the work ourselves and we didn't have that much that broke. 
Oh, well, I don't know. We had to re rebuild and replace the uh, water maker pump a few times. We had to replace the anchor chain, which we still have to do yet again. Um, <laughs> Rebuild and replace the starter, main cell traveler. traveler. We've had the windows, fridge repairs, like the list goes on and on, but they weren't ex yeah. outrageously expensive things, I guess. But that's... again, because we did them ourselves. That's true. Yeah. That's true. But next year will be a completely different story, and I would guess we're going to be on that 10 to 15. Yeah range just because we have a lot of like bigger maintenance and upgrades to take care of um replacing the chain again we have to actually replace the windows this time yep and we've got leaky hatches <sighs> that were we didn't replace before, before we left <laughs> anyway so it's like you just every more. few years you're gonna have some big stuff come up and so it kind of averages out in the wash over the grand scheme of things but so take it or leave it that's what it is <laughs> i hate this category bureaucracy. <laughs> this includes all of the government fees for checking in and checking out of ports and into new countries. Let me tell you, it's the most fun you will ever spend your money on. No, that's a lie. <laughs> it's basically anybody with a badge, they come and collect money. And like, it's not always a painful process. Yeah. Sometimes it is actually enjoyable. enjoyable. You yeah. You meet a local and ask him where his favorite restaurant is. Like, right. It's like your first point of contact in a new country. So it is exciting. There's things like the health minister, customs, immigration, art base, visas, biosecurity. Waste authority. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's so many different things that you have to pay fees for. And this is all stuff you just don't ever have to deal with if you're just hopping on a plane and flying somewhere. So it is very different. And there are a lot of fees associated with all of this. And also in this category is our Panama Canal transit fees, which we did without an agent. Um, so we it was less money than it would have been otherwise. Way less money. So that's in there. And also our U.S. Coast Guard registration, which is almost nothing every year. And then our dinghy registration in Delaware. Yep. Dockage. So this one covers marina fees, which for us is super rare. Feels because like we never go to them. Yeah, I would say 95% of our time is spent at anchor. We really only go to a dock because we have boat repairs we need to make and a dock is just the best place to do that particular set of maintenance or repairs. Like when we replace the chain, the anchor chain the first yeah, time. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You need to kind of be on a dock for that kind of a thing. This also includes a dinghy dock. Most dinghy docks are free, but some charge you and just depending on where you are, it can be actually a lot of money. So yeah, that's in there. Mooring balls. Mooring balls. Yeah. So every once in a while, your only option is to grab a mooring ball because maybe they're trying to protect the reef or you're in an, like a marine park or you're anchoring up a river and that's your only option and because you're either going to pay an anchoring fee or you're going to pay a mooring ball fee and you might as well grab that mooring ball. And... <laughs> like in Ecuador for us. <laughs> yeah. And this also includes the haul out fee that we were charged in Tonga when we hauled out our boat for cyclone season. Yeah. So our fees in this area hasn't been too bad just yet but it will unfortunately go up substantially again this year for us because of dry storage and the pandemic and borders being closed yeah, and our boat only supposed to be on dry storage for a few months and now it's gonna be like a long time yeah. let's not think about that moving on yeah. fuel because we're a sailboat and we're off grid we don't use much fuel or at least I, I don't think we use that much fuel or way less fuel than we use in the rv that's for sure well i mean we're not <laughs> driving around anymore but yes we do try to sail and pick our weather windows so that we don't have to motor often um, and so we have this broken up into two categories we've got diesel and gasoline diesel is it, that's running our generator at which we do about twice a week just to exercise the generator make sure it's still in good working condition and, and to run our water maker because we have to run the water maker twice a week basically every three to four days yep and then you know the occasional motor sale uh, wind doesn't always work out mother nature's not always it's, working it's with us. a prediction not a premonition as they usually say with the weather uh, and we also use the engines to go in and out of port or to anchor and pull the anchor up so we use the engines in little bursts often yeah and then gasoline, that is our dinghy and our scuba compressor also is a gas engine. So that's where that comes in. I mean, it's incredible. Like the dinghy is our car and we used almost no gasoline. I, it just blows me away. Yeah. Anyway, it's yeah. a great lifestyle. I love it. <laughs> All right, now we're jumping into the living expenses. So first up in our biggest category by far, I think across Total. the board, right? Yeah, yeah. And probably even our biggest one for the past 10 years. Yeah, I don't think this has ever 
been not our biggest expense and it's provisions, but it's because it covers a lot of different things. So all of our groceries, including booze, yes. so everything we eat and drink, and then all of our like biodegradable toiletries, the, the dish soaps, the laundry soaps, the... All the, cleaning supplies. Yes, and then a few random things that you would buy at a supermarket, like uh, a pair of glasses or flip-flops. Or, or if you, like I bought a new frying pan at one point, yeah. but it's also like trash bags and cloths and who knows whatever else in there. If you're considering a budget, if you're making a budget for yourself, consider what you're spending now. Like look at the Target, the Whole Foods, the whatever markets you're going to, add them all up and... I would say it's difficult to change habits overnight. So if you're spending $10,000 right now, then Pow. budget for $10,000. <laughs> if you're eating that much, I want to come out with you. Uh, no, but whatever your budget is right now for provisions, it most likely isn't going to change a lot. Even if you think, oh, I'm going to cook you know, on the boat more, but just don't expect that to happen overnight. Entertainment. So this one went down drastically when we moved on the boat. Like, so much of our entertainment is based around the boat. Scuba diving, snorkeling, supping. Is it supping? Stand up Stand paddle boarding. <laughs> Free diving. You know, everything that would have normally cost us a small fortune. To do, well, because where we are is around the water and on islands. And normally, if you're on holiday, you would have to pay a tour operator with a boat and everything else to take you out. And that gets really expensive for us. We have all of that built in, so we don't pay for any of that. And that's kind of part of the beauty of the lifestyle, right? You just hop in the water and there it is, bam. Exactly, so where this really goes into is like eating out, it was probably the most of yeah, the Yeah, biggest square of this pie. Yes, and then the occasional like museum or national park entry fee, yes, hello yes. doggy. And a few and random expenses like audiobooks, music and videos, creators we support on Patreon. Yep, all of that gets lumped into this category. Travel. Sounds like a weird category, I know, but we do still have travel expenses for when we are away from the boat, meaning whenever we hop on land. Yeah, and we categorize it into three separate categories. <laughs> the first one <laughs> being land travel. Like sometimes we have to go inland to explore, like we're drawn to the mountains or drawn to whatever we see on land. Yeah, we want to go set foot on a glacier or when, whenever we visited the cloud forest oh, and all the coffee, coffee farms. farms. Oh, so yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah, so we might go into the city, so which would require maybe a bus or a taxi, an Uber, even sometimes just going to get provisions. It's too far away, we can't walk, gotta pay a cab. Exactly, and this also includes rental car, and when we rent a car, we have to pay gasoline, parking, tolls, so that is basically all of the land expenses. Yep or land travel. Yeah, and you're gonna wanna rent a car every great once in a while because some places are just too big to explore and you're gonna wanna go inland. Even if it's a small island, you wanna get all the way around the island because there's so much to explore. The next thing is accommodations, which would be like hotel and Airbnbs, which we have done a couple times when we've gone on longer inland trips, Yep. but only twice, I think. Yeah, get windy. Yeah. And air, air travel. So we have paid for over the last two years, I suppose? Two three flights. Two and a half, okay. <laughs> three flights. One was... Oh, me, when I had to <laughs> freaking fly home like on an emergency trip to, because all of our bank accounts were locked and we couldn't pay bills and, oh, it was a nightmare. Yeah, that was from Ecuador. Uh, so I had to buy an emergency trip back to Texas. Yep, just to go to the bank. And then I took a trip home at one point because, well, we had parts that we really needed to get. Some of them were kind of expensive or were larger and to ship them was going to be so expensive, it literally paid for a flight. So for my birthday, I decided to hop on a plane, go to California, visit my cousin Matt and bring back all of those supplies for the same amount of money. And then the other one was a similar situation. My brother had always wanted to come out. We needed a couple parts like a starter and he was able to fly out. Uh, he paid for his flight home, we paid for his flight out, oh, yep. and it ended up being way less expensive and way quicker. And than, way more fun, way more fun than paying for shipping when we could just simply pay for half of his flight to yeah. be able to come out, so and that was awesome. That's what we call a mule run. Yeah. Communications. So this includes our Iridium Go, which acts as our satellite phone, our offshore email, and our weather. Mm -hmm. And then we have our Google Fi, which is our cell phone, so we can keep our USA number and we can get cell and data a lot of places around the world. And it works immediately, so we have a little bit of data and phone usage 
before we ever even get checked in and we're allowed to get onto land. Yeah, and then once we get to land, then we'll buy a local SIM and a data card because I mean, usually that data is faster and cheaper than the Google Fi. Yeah, and a lot of times you also need a local number because oh, yeah. you need to be able to call, well, the locals, yeah. whether it's scheduling a part or you need to... A rental car. Yeah, anything. Yeah. yeah, lots of reasons you'll you'll need that number. It also includes the occasional cyber cafe uh, for... Uh, Uploading a video or, exactly. you know, just general Wi-Fi usage, which on Wi-Fi usage, this one could be a huge variable for yeah. lots of people out there, but we're pretty frugal with our data. Um, we don't stream anything. We are very careful with our downloads. We really just use this for work purposes, for uploading videos and communication with all of you. Yeah. The rando category, miscellaneous. miscellaneous. <laughs> this is like everything that just didn't fit into another yeah, category. Exactly. And the biggest one here is the pet fees. So for the past two years, we had been traveling with our two cats and things like food and litter, the import fees that we have to pay for the two cats. Yeah. Biosecurity and veterinarian visits. Yeah, veterinary, yeah. veterinarian visits. Wow, wow. That was so hard. Say that three times. Yeah. And we definitely visited a few veterinarians <laughs> because we had to get them microchipped. We had to get them prepared to be accepted to French Polynesia. Yeah. Uh, and then we had to have blood the tests. Blood tests. And yeah. So on and so forth. So anyway, lots of things associated with traveling with your pets. So if you don't travel with pets, then you can, you know, eliminate that slice of the pie. This also includes bank fees. Um, once we started traveling by boat, then we had to start sending wires, uh, which I'd never really done before. So mm -hmm. we've got a few wire fees. Uh, we have some credit card foreign transaction fees, FTFs, if you're in the know. <laughs> now I have a new credit card that doesn't have FTFs, but back then I, anyway. And a yeah. few ATM fees. I have a no fee ATM card, but sometimes it doesn't work in the ATM machine, so there yeah. you go. Yeah, you'll end up with a few random ones. What are you laughing about? My hair. Oh. <laughs> and then the last one is postage and shipping. Let me just tell you so many people say, hey, just ship a thumb drive back with all your videos. Well, it's not that no. easy. <laughs> Shipping internationally, especially to remote islands, whether you're shipping in or you're shipping out, one, it takes way longer and it's horribly expensive. Like we got a small box that was like 150 bucks uh, to here into Fiji. And then Jason sent like- yeah, I got a, I got a doc, boat documentation, our Coast Guard thing that I needed before we could check out. And it cost $120 to mail it. Yeah. So. It is expensive and we try not to do very much of it, obviously, but there will be a few here and there. Last and certainly not least is healthcare. And this one could be its own video because it's a, kind of a big, a doozy. yeah, long, arduous process and conversation. But anyway, we have a health insurance policy and we didn't in the beginning, but we found out whenever we were doing all of our paperwork for Ecuador, they had a new law that was coming into effect that required you to, to prove cruise. that you had health care before they would approve you to come into the country. So we signed up, we got a great plan. So I think yeah. that covers us anywhere in the world except for the USA. USA. That is a statement, right? That's the only way we could keep it affordable. Otherwise it just like whoosh. skyrocketed. Yep. Yeah, so it's just a catastrophic plan. So that means if we are out and something happens, then we have to pay for basically everything until we get to a certain amount. And then from there, like $10,000 is our deductible. Like yeah. You can do like five or $10,000. I can't remember yeah, what we then did. The insurance plan kicks in and like that really came in handy or will come in candy if something happens on the boat and we have to be care flighted, flit, yep. care flit, care flit, care flight. If yeah, if you need a care flight. <laughs> <laughs> or if you have to be hospitalized, all of that can add up really quickly, then a catastrophic plan comes in in those situations. And then of course, because it is a catastrophic plan, it means we pay for all of the small stuff out of our own pockets. Like the vaccinations we had in Panama. Uh, we visited a dermatologist in Panama because, well, we're sailors and we're constantly exposed to the sun. So, so it's very important to get checked because, you know, we're pasty. Yeah. And then there's that one time that Nikki I had to go to the emergency room. Yes, because I'm allergic to all sorts of things. In the world's most Rhode Island. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. Uh, but it was a great experience, super affordable. Um, but all of those costs are included in here because every once in a while, you find out you're allergic to something new or whatever. <laughs> and then of course the pharmacy visits that we've paid for out of pocket are in this as well for gels and creams and stuff for her. What? You cut yourself every once in a while. <laughs> too, like headache whatever. medicine, you know, miscellaneous stuff. Anyway, pharmacy. You get stuff, pharmacy. Yep. 
So what does all of that total up to? It's $2,800 per month. And that's been our average for the last two years. Now, of course, some years are more expensive, some are less. Our first year was definitely more because we were outfitting and we had all of those costs. This year will unfortunately be quite a bit more for us because again, maintenance and upgrades that we've got to take care of, but also pandemic because well, right now our boat is stuck in Tonga and we're paying for dry storage there. Plus we had our crate of supplies that we had shipped over and we're having trouble getting those. And what do you do with them? Cause now you're not there to like accept them and they want to charge you extra in any way. It's just pandemic. Um, so yeah, want to be able to put in extra buffer for unforeseen things. The only thing we didn't include in this is what we consider business expenses. Yeah. And for us, that's like computers, cameras, tripods, software, uh, taxes. anything, taxes, yeah, <laughs> anything to do with the website, hosting, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but hopefully you found this helpful and it's given you a little bit of insight. But most importantly, please remember that you really can do this on almost any, any budget. budget. Yeah. Yeah, but let me circle back around to you. Did we forget anything? Yeah. Was there something that you really wanted to know about that we didn't cover? Something else you want us to dive deeper yeah. into all together? Make yeah. sure and drop that down in the comment box below. Like insurance or uh, healthcare? <laughs> or anything. Or anything. anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and oh, and if you're new, then make sure and check out this video over here because we sat down and gave all of the things that we wished we would have known before we took off. And thank you so much for spending your time with us. Thank, thank you, you for, for being watching. a part of it. Yeah. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. <laughs> and okay. ring that bell. Okay, bye-bye. Love you, bye. <laughs>